that has a lot of different points and a lot of different opinions. So I'm going to speak from a little bit of my personal experience and playing throughout the area and a little beyond and try to bring a little insight as to why I feel that we have a lot of work to do. Um, as he said, my name is Jazzy Riaz. I studied in New York City, which was a really awesome experience. Um, <clears throat> there's no city like that place. Um, I was also fortunate to travel abroad and play in Europe for a tour with an artist that was really awesome. And I got to meet a lot of different people and experience a lot of different things. And, and I was able to see how they approach their music scene, which, by the way, is really awesome. Um, very embracing culture over there, a mix of cultures. Uh, <clears throat> not only that, I stepped into a new role of becoming sort of a band leader of my own project that's kind of getting its start, but <clears throat> I've been able to experience different things from that side of it. So I have like this big, big platter of different things that I've been able to to go through and, and to see as all three of these different things. So I'm going to touch on a few different topics as to why I feel like there are a lot of changes that, that could be made. Um, Greenville is geographically located in just the perfect spot. It's really shocking to me that we are not a music destination. We're right between Atlanta and Charlotte and most major artists, regional artists, they're coming either here, Asheville, I'm sorry, Atlanta, Asheville, or Charlotte, and you know, we're right here in the middle, and no one, well, I won't say no one, but very few tend to stop here and see what it is that we have to offer. And there are a ton of different reasons. Um, I, I chose to touch on the, the business artist relationship, um, <clears throat> also compensation, and diversity and demand. Those were the three things that kind of resonated the loudest with me with what I've been able to experience. So first, I'll start with the business artist relationship. So in a lot of the venues that I've been to locally and, and closer to here, I've experienced that there are some venue owners and this, I mean, people could have different opinions on this, but they, they tend to have a lack of respect for us as musicians. So I've gone into many, many different places and immediately, like the owners are just, they're just immediately attacking us, you know, what be for different reasons. Um, that, you know, it kind of immediately for a musician, it, it spills into, as artists as we are, it spills into like our creative process, our performing process. So, you know, pardon us if we get a little upset and, you know, we might be a little, uh, a little edgy throughout the performance, but that, that kind of goes into that. Um, I, when traveling to Europe, the biggest thing that I noticed is that there was such a welcoming, um, the, the music scene there is just totally different. Uh, even as strangers to them, you know, from America, beyond that, even the locals that return from different countries, that they have like a really close-knit community. So a lot of those guys know each other. And so they would tour all of these, these venues in these countries and they would meet up at this place. And I met a lot of people in one place that had seen each other in like two countries over and they're like, hey, hey, how's it going? And so the businesses there tend to be a lot more welcoming in that there were a lot of instances, and this happened so many different times, that they, the owners would come up to us after performances and they would genuinely thank us just for what we did. And it was just a simple, you know what, thank you. Like, we really appreciate it. If you guys weren't doing this, we would not nearly be able to do what we do. And I can count maybe on one hand how many times I played around here and had an owner just come up and say, hey guys, you really crushed it. I really just want to say thank you because you could be doing this somewhere else what you're doing here. So that goes a really, really long way in the whole camaraderie, even just between business and artist relationship. Um, and we compare ourselves a lot to Asheville. Asheville is very similar in that they just have such a tight community. The community is just so tightly knit, even not only just with the musicians, but with the, the venue owners. Everyone's friends. No one wants to cheat anyone. Everyone wants to make sure that everyone's happy. So <clears throat> I've kind of noticed that there's a huge divide in that aspect here in Greenville, just through my personal experience. So 
you know, a lot of other times kind of leading to another point is, you know, we'll play a show and there might be, and I kind of like that Alex touched on this before, that there's like poor turnout. And a different side of what I've experienced is a lot of businesses, they kind of expect the musicians to, um, I feel like the businesses have as equal a part in promotion as do the musicians. Um, so I've, I've been encountered with, you know, turnout was bad tonight, you guys should have did this, 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 and this. And for me, you know, it's, it's I said, I can see where you're coming from, mm -hmm. but let's say for instance, for example, if a restaurant owner has a new chef come in, a resident chef is gonna be there for a week or two, that restaurant owner conveys to his, his patrons, hey, this guy's coming in, this is what he's gonna do, this is how it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. He wants his people to know who's coming and why, and why it's gonna be so great and why you should come back the next week or the week after that. So with me, it's the same thing with music, you know. We as musicians, we have so much on our plate with other different things that I'll get into, that yes, it is, we have a responsibility to promote as well, but as a business who's trying to grow their business, you would expect that they would be a little bit more concerned with promotioning themselves to make sure that they're painting in the right picture. So they have the best, they know their customers better than we do. So they know how to convey to them, hey, come do this, come, you know, come take part in this, this is what's going on. So the, that kind of uh, leads me to another point, I'm kind of all over the place. But uh, another thing that I've also noticed is that when, I know a lot of businesses, they wonder why a lot of, we only have a, local people that are playing here. We don't get a lot of stops from outside people. Um, the truth of it is that the music community is a lot more tight-knit than you might expect. Um, even in me meeting people that are playing on like a much higher professional level, as I would consider, uh, that are touring nationally, I've met a lot of people who are very accomplished, very well known, and then I may meet someone of the same stature. It's like, oh yeah, you know that guy? I know that guy as well. So these musicians have this circuit and they talk and they talk a lot. So one thing that I've noticed um, with a few venues, uh, and this is just all over the place, is that the businesses lack of understanding to reinvest into their music ventures. Um, by that I mean, I've gone and played venues where the sound system is just terrible and the sound system has been terrible. You know, I've played there over the course of several years and it's like, well, I know what to expect when I come here. And for local musicians, it's just kind of like, you know, we got to take it how it's given. But for national guys who are dealing with uh, talent buyers and booking agencies, they don't really have to tolerate that. They can play a venue, not be happy, and say, hey, Bob, or whoever is booking me, this is what happened here. This is what we got when we got there. Don't put me there again. And that is it's kind of sad, but it is one of those things that just has to happen. So. Quality musicians have quality equipment, shouldn't the venue. You know, you're wanting this caliber of a player, so y'all feel like you should have this caliber of equipment. So, going off of that, another thing I've experienced is when we pull up, being a musician, touring, and just in and out of bands, and loading equipment in and out, and we know we have to be responsible for our equipment, but one of the biggest surprises I got once I began playing on a certain level was to pull up to a music venue and think, oh God, I gotta do this again, you know, I'm so exhausted. And to see this door open and like four big guys come out, I was like, what do you need me to grab? <laughs> so, blew me away and made me realize, oh gosh, this is something, this is, and it was a, it was a very well-known venue, very, very well accomplished, very successful, and they generally get the bigger acts. And I was like, you know what, this is why. They have, everybody was really nice, everybody was personable. There weren't really, the sound guy was just, and that for me is like the biggest thing is the sound. I could kind of tolerate a lot of other guys just kind of being jerks, but the sound guy is the guy that's going to make me sound good. And if he's mean, then I'm going to be upset, and then he's going to feel like, well, I need to make him sound terrible. So, like, so when you have those sorts of things going on, like having a sound engineer is huge. So a lot of venues don't understand the importance of that guy because um, playing on playing live music, it gets loud. It does. It just happens. And you kind of have to know that and understand that and expect it. But having a sound engineer that's in-house, that's familiar with the quality equipment that should be had, 
it goes a long way because that guy knows, you know what, this is what I need to do, or this is what I need to tell the band so that I know that our people, that, the people that are coming to hear us are not like blown away and you know they may be having a good time but they're having a hard time talking to their friends to say how good the band sounds and it, it's, it just goes such a long way those things go really really hand in hand so um yeah those are big things that kind of lead into the compensation of things and this one is like a little touchy especially with a lot of owners um and i just feel like reasonable compensation should reflect the amount of work that's expected so if you are paying the band, there are like a few things I think that should be considered. One of them being uh, what if you expect the band to bring their own equipment. And by that, uh, playing in New York, most venues have house equipment. They have an amp, they have drums, they have, you know, stuff. And, you know, their traveling is a little bit different than here. So, you know, there's a little bit of leeway in, in the two different settings. But mainly, it's a PA situation because a lot of musicians around here, especially with the more bar, restaurant type settings, you know, they want the musicians to bring a PA. And that is like really, that takes its toll on the body if you're doing that every single night playing locally because nobody has a sound system. And so that is one thing to consider. Um, also, preparation for these performances. And I had this conversation with countless friends and that you know most people I'm a full-time musician it's all I do I do teach on the side but for the most part I'm playing music so most people have 40 hours in a week to make their income and five days let's just say I have generally on a good week from Thursday to Sunday but most likely between Friday and Saturday to make what most people are making in their one week so that being said those other four days, or however many days, I'm not just, oh, it's 10 a.m., I think I'll just take my time getting out of bed. No, I'm generally, I'm either like listening to music, I'm studying music, I'm preparing for rehearsals, I'm having to learn new material, I have to drive to wherever it is we are rehearsing. And this, I can speak from this because I recently changed bands, and I have, since late September, I've been rehearsing every single week since last week. So I've been commuting to a different city, back and forth, back and forth, gas, time. We're doing four-hour rehearsals between Monday and Thursday. And so these are like huge things that I think a lot of people in general really don't take into consideration when they look at a musician, especially a full-time musician. That, that These are the things that we have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So one of the things that goes into the conversation part is the use of contracts, which I don't see happen a lot around here. And personally, been <laughs> burned by a few individuals. And this kind of ties back into the promotion end of things. I've played shows where, you know, a, a promoter or, or event organizers come up at the end and say, well, you know, hey, this is what happened this evening. We didn't get this many people as we expected, so we're gonna have to pay you this. Or I've gotten, hey, we didn't do that well, so I can give you this now and you can, and I can meet up with you later this week. To me, if I was a business owner, first of all, that's embarrassing and unacceptable is how I feel about that. Is, you know, you want your business to do well and you want people to think a certain way about your business. But as musicians, we have friends that are patrons too. And some of those people feel as passionately about music as we do. And so it ends up, it's a big word of mouth thing that ends up happening. So those things go on and, um, it kind of makes the band feel like they're being punished for a bad night and then, you know, like I said, paid less or paid later. And, you know, we have bills like everybody else. So, um, the one of the other big touchy things that I kind of wanted to get onto is the diversity aspect of Greenville. And personally, I'm, I'm sure I'll get some comments from this later. I don't feel, I, Greenville is a smaller, a smaller city and therefore isn't as diverse as a larger city. But I personally don't feel that Greenville is as diverse as Greenville thinks it is. So. <laughs> I'll elaborate. So, uh, <laughs> so, you know, I see a lot of different type of people in Greenville, but Greenville 
I would say people wise is the first. Like you see a guy who's you know from this heritage to this heritage to this heritage, but you don't really see people who are culturally diverse. Like you see these people, but it's like you know they've been Americanized, and so you get people who think the American way, and you don't get a lot of that as an artist. Like that's creative fuel for me, anyways. You know to see this and think, oh man, what if, I wonder where this guy's going. What is he doing? He's dressed like this or this. You know you don't get that type of. I don't get that type of vibe when I walk downtown Greenville. And it's not necessarily something that I don't, don't think we're on the way to. I do see ourselves becoming a lot more diverse. Um, but with that being said, you know, I go and play, when I was playing the Greenville circuit really hard, I played one venue one night and go a couple of blocks this way. And it was like, man, I'm playing for the same exact people that I played last night, you know? So therefore, it, it felt like I was not really reaching a lot of different ears. So um, with that, you know, like-minded people generally are going to prefer the same types of music. So it, when the venues are booking these gigs, they're gonna say, well, you know, well, this band did that well with this crowd, so I'm gonna book a band that's just like that band. And because that's what brought me the most this or whatever. So you get to where the people who are creating original music end up not really having a platform to get that side of things heard. So we, like Alex said earlier, we have all of these amazing musicians around here. These guys are songwriters. They're great instrument, they have great instrumentation. And most of us collab together, but it's like, man, you know, we don't have that big of a platform to let these things be heard. So I think once Greenville, even as a community, not just the business owners, begins to like cultivate and like raise up what is here already, but just isn't what's heard. I think that we'll become, I mean, we don't have a choice. We have an endless amount of potential where we are located. Our location will never move, but we have to like lift up our own so that they can be heard and can like get the fuel to branch out so that more people can say, oh, where are they from? They're from Greenville. Well, I think I should check Greenville out. So we don't really have that huge support system that a lot of cities have, like Austin, which is honestly a little shocking to be named the next Austin because I feel like we have a really long time. I've been in Austin. I've been in Austin. And it's, it's a lot different. So I think we could, we could, I could see the similarities and we have the potential to do it. But as I said, once we like collectively get together and say, you know what, we have this music community, let's like push these guys, kind of like we're pushing this Village West Greenville thing. I think we should really push our musicians and give them that platform that they need so that we can really say that we are the next one.